What's up guys? Welcome to the new video. It's Wednesday. It's not Wednesday. You don't have to tell them that we don't always film it on Wednesday. I'm going to have to cut that piece out. What's up guys? It's Wednesday. I'm feeling in a winning mood. That can only mean one thing. It's Winners Wednesday. Same as the last time guys, we're going to spend two minutes talking about a quick topic, hopefully something interesting, hopefully something you find useful. Today we're going to talk about photographing the moon, because there's a real cool moon outside, I'm going to photograph it, and I'll show okay, you how guys, to do it. So, photographing the moon in two minutes. Hang on. The TV sounds on. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys, so photographing the moon in two minutes. First thing you're going to need is your longest possible lens. For me that's 300mm. Now I do normally have a 1.4 extender. Um, but gutted right now I don't because I sold it because I had the Mark II and I'm upgrading to the Mark III and I haven't got the Mark III yet. So right now I'm only 300 mil. But look, a lot of you guys, you might have 200 mil, 300 mil, 400 mil, 500 mil. Doesn't matter. Use use whatever your longest lens is. I've also got the 1.6 crop factor, which is going to help me out. Now camera settings. The hardest thing people will struggle with with the moon is they take a photograph of the moon and it comes out just a bright white circle. You don't get any of the detail in it. Now the easiest way to get around that, something which I learned when I first started trying to photograph the moon, is a rule called the Mooney 11 rule. Now in real simple terms, you set your aperture to 11. So set your aperture to 11. That's your rule of 11. And then your shutter speed and your ISO, you want them to be at the same number. And I mean literally the same number. So right now I have set up my aperture on 11. My shutter speed is 200th of a second and therefore I've set my ISO to 200. You can do whatever. You could have your shutter speed at 400th of a second, in which case you'd set your ISO to 400 and so on and so on. That's the rule of 11. Aperture stays at 11 the whole time. Other thing you want to do guys, use the tripod so that you're real steady, not shaking, not moving around, use the tripod the whole time. And last but not least, set yourself up either with the remote shutter or what I've done right here is the delayed timer. So when I press the thing, um, so when I press the thing, the shutter button, it will be three seconds before it takes the photo, which means any vibration from me pressing the button is gone from the camera. Cool, so let's take the photo and see how it comes out. I've got, I'm doing this out the window, you guys can probably tell. Ideally, guys, go outside, do this in a field, something like that. Don't do it out the window. So, do it out the window, let's get the photo. And then if we come round, if you guys want to come and have a look at the back of the camera. I'm going to put this into the video, guys, so it'll be much more detail. And then we will show you how it looks in a little bit more detail. Okay guys, so I hope you found that useful. As I said, I'm going to include the photo at the end of the video so you can get a proper look at it. Last but not least, don't forget as always guys, if you're new around here, hit the subscribe button. Check out my other social media channels. I'm going to put those on the screen right now. Guys, if you're already subscribing, thanks for watching. Like you know, we're going to do this every Wednesday. The next full video will be up real soon. I'm actually going away for a couple of days to France to, on a photography trip. So I'm going to include some stuff from there. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed the new Winners Wednesday episode. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next one.